every morning in the wild, a gazelle awakens. One thing is for sure for the gazelle that day, as every other. She must run faster than the fastest lion. If she cannot, she will be killed and eaten. Every morning, a lion awakens. For the lion too, one thing is certain. This day and every day, he must run faster than the slowest gazelle. Whether fate names you a gazelle or a lion is of no consequence. It is enough to know that with the rising of the sun, you must run, and you must run faster than the day before for the rest of your days, or you will die. We all have to run. Run the race of life. This race of life will shine some light on the dark side of the coral reef. Even the most colorful corners down here could be hiding something deadly. This is a world packed with predators. The lightning speed and pin cushion teeth of the Barracuda. The giant size and surprise attacks of the moray eel, but also a surprising grace and beauty. The knitting needle spines of the lionfish, capable of injecting deadly venom. And one of the most toxic animals on the planet, who also happens to be the most grumpy. And a surprise angle on one of the most famous killers of the ocean. Not just any shark, but the reef shark. You will never see the underwater world the same again once you realize the battles that are happening down below. It's a place of constant struggles to survive. Of all the vast expanse of the seas and oceans on our planet, much of the life is concentrated near the coast and in the shallow waters. Most of these underwater predators do not want to attack humans, but we have chosen to enter their world. A surfboard can look like a sea lion to a hungry shark. A glinting piece of jewelry can look like a fish to a moray eel. And the splashing motion of a swimmer can sound like an injured animal to a passing barracuda. This episode looks beyond the beautiful corals and tropical fish to investigate the complex world of predator and prey. We will dive deep to uncover the secrets hidden in the coral canyons. We'll get up close to the lion of the sea, swim side by side with a classic killer, and slither along the seabed with four meters of muscle in the underwater predator's race of life. Tropical seas, warm, clear, and calm, but something sinister lies beneath this glassy surface. The colorful fish of the coral reefs are one of nature's wonders. These predators hunt in schools. They gang up to herd smaller fish together for a feast. Their eyesight is sharp and precise. They run an isolated and aggressive race of life. 
adults only come together for two occasions, to spawn and to hunt. These streamlined tigers of the ocean live in tropical and subtropical waters worldwide. The Barracuda. The name strikes fear into people living in the tropics. There are around 28 species. Barracuda prefer to live near the sea surface. They spend much of their time hidden, waiting for their prey. This large adult is waiting to ambush a smaller fish. He relies on camouflage and short, intense bursts of speed. Once his prey is caught in these fang-like teeth, there is no escape. This smaller barracuda is staying hidden for different reasons. He's hoping predator does not become prey, because stalking these waters is a giant barracuda. This big old fish will not hesitate to take another barracuda if he gets the chance. This one fingerling has an itch she needs to scratch. She's looking for a special place in the underwater world. A cleaning station. Despite the barracuda's hearty appetite, the little fish swimming close to her jaws are in no danger. The barracuda will not eat them because they are helping her. They are cleaner wrasse, and their job is to eat all the parasites and dead skin from the barracuda. Their teeth are sharp and irregular for maximum biting efficiency. From the moment they grow up into fingerlings, these supreme predators are ready to hunt and kill. This fingerling has no idea our infant killers are out there. Even baby barracudas can strike at incredible speeds, up to 40 kilometers an hour. This adult looks like he's bitten off more than he can chew. Barracudas have been known to attack by biting their prey in half. The barracuda may try to take a bite if they believe humans are carcasses, so the secret here is to keep moving. One of the giants of the sea looks more like a snake than a fish. He comes in a beautiful range of patterns and colors. Despite his fierce looking face, he runs a shy and secretive race of life. He spends most of his time in the safety of holes and crevices, but he's a carnivore and a very efficient hunter. His teeth are like rows of needles, designed over generations to bite into slippery fish. But at his best, he can be a stunning pinup of the underwater world. The moray eel. This giant moray is at a day spa. Just like the barracuda, he likes to come and have a good clean and exfoliation at the cleaning station. He may be shy, but he's usually quite gentle and often very curious. The glorious colors and patterns on many mores are a wonderful wardrobe of camouflage. Even the brightest colors can be hard to spot among the rainbows and irregular surfaces of a coral reef. 
The little wrasse is cleaning a second set of teeth deep in the eel's throat. These teeth can shoot forward to pull prey down the animal's gullet. It looks risky, but the wrasse will not be attacked. This adult has come out into the open to explore the reef and rocks for food. Her eyesight is quite poor, so she relies on a keen sense of smell to find a meal. Her graceful swimming style is like an underwater ballet. Most mores prey on fish and other eels, but some species prefer a more dainty diet of prawns and shellfish. Eels are among the ultimate winners in the race of life. They evolved over 500 million years ago. They are the earliest known ancestor of animals with backbones, and that includes us. This moray is making a meal of somebody else's leftovers. Their backward-facing teeth are perfectly designed for tearing off chunks of flesh. This one is in for a feast, if she can drag her magnificent haul back to safety. Just like the barracuda, the moray's taste for carcasses explains the occasional eel attacks on humans. This undulated moray is on the hunt. It all happens at lightning speed. When the attack is slowed down, it's easier to understand how the sharp teeth can get a grip on their slippery prey. These remarkable animals are not only perfect underwater predators, they are gentle and graceful winners in the oceanic race of life. Coral reefs are like the Amazon rainforest of the sea, which could explain why they are home to one of the most aggressively invasive animals on the planet. This animal is a fish, and it is dramatically different from other fish. Its colors are striking and its fins are graceful, but they also hide massive spines containing deadly venom. This beautiful fish wins its race of life because almost nothing will dare to eat it. It has spread to reefs all over the world with alarming speed. These stripy invaders managed to colonize the Atlantic Ocean along the American coast in only 10 years. Unlike their personality, their taste is described as sweet and delicate. This strange-looking fish can be as small as a strawberry or as big as a watermelon, and they are not shy. Not surprisingly, these fish have been given a range of colorful names, zebrafish, turkey fish, butterfly cod. But the name that most people use clearly shows how this fish is king of the tropical oceans. He is a predator with almost no predators. Other animals maintain a respectful distance from him. He is the lionfish. They come in white with black or different shades of orange, red, and rich pink. Their bright colors are a warning to other creatures that they're venomous. This coral trout is another fierce underwater predator, but this meal is too tricky.
Like all lionfish, she can maneuver like a helicopter. She can precisely control an airbag inside her body, called a swim bladder, and so she can hold her position at almost any angle. This collection of males and females are each looking for a mate. Lionfish only come together to breed. The rest of the time, they live alone. This fish is on the hunt. She strayed away from the camouflage of the reef. She fans her lethal fins out for maximum protection. This large male is being more proactive. He fancies his chances of catching some of these bait fish. The rapid strike is the most effective method for grabbing a meal. Despite her bright color, this lionfish is well hidden against the orange coral. She uses her fins to walk along the reef. She's stalking the fry. The ominous shadow of the lionfish is a warning to all. But not all the smaller fish have seen her. Might as well strike while the iron's hot. Lionfish live from five to 15 years, unless something eats them first. But given their impressive weapons, many of them live a long and well-fed race of life. The creature lying in these canyons runs an invisible race of life. Of the many strange shapes and creatures on the coral reef, one is so strange he doesn't look like a living creature, and he has the deadliest venom in the world. As we get closer, his outline may become visible. His incredible camouflage makes him one of the most effective predators in the sea. It's a fish, a fish that can make herself look like a stone. Stonefish have 13 sharp spines in their dorsal fins. The poison they inject can be lethal to humans. The five species of stonefish all live in the tropics. They won't attack humans, but when they're buried in the sand, they're like a trap. Many unsuspecting paddlers and reef walkers have accidentally stood on the stonefish. Stonefish use shape and texture to blend in, as well as color. Sometimes all that's visible is that fierce-looking mouth. Not all stonefish are dull browns and grays. Some add a glorious splash of color to their wardrobe. Stonefish venom is stored in glands at the base of each spine. When attacked, venom is instantly discharged into the spines and injected into the attacker. There are five species of stonefish. They're all able to walk on their fins, and they all like to eat small fish and shrimps. This female has decided her hunting ground has run out of food. She's moving on to find richer pastures. Small fish are easy prey for stonefish, but not much of a meal. This fish is completely unaware that danger is lurking beneath. For the stonefish, his race of life requires patience. If this fish is going to win his race of life today, he will need a better memory. Got him at last. 
time for the stonefish to sit back on the rocks and digest his meal. This classic underwater predator has a more approachable side. She's known for being the silent killer of the deep. Her silhouette strikes dread into every swimmer, both human and animal. But sometimes she's not as bad as she looks. Her sinister cousins prefer to live far from the warm waters of the reef. Yes, she's a shark, but she doesn't have the reputation of colder water sharks like the bull and the great white. She's not as big, and so neither is her appetite. Unlike their cold water cousins, they often move in large groups. They are still hunters with the speed and skill of all sharks. The huge bait balls of tropical fish are the favorite dining places for these graceful predators. They sometimes work in teams to round up the fish. They have a good set of teeth and an excellent sense of smell. And when there's lots of food around, there's almost a sense of a party. These high-speed hunters run a well-equipped race of life. They are reef sharks. Reef sharks are smaller than their temperate cousins and rarely grow more than 1.6 meters. A school of mullet or whiting may have attracted this reef shark feeding frenzy. Their huge numbers help the sharks win this race of life. They can work together to herd the fish against the shore so there's no escape. These black tips are getting together to find a mate. The females swim in long S-bends to show they are ready to meet a male. Most reef sharks are not aggressively territorial, but they do have a regular home range and they will stay close to it for many years. These reef fish are in danger. A reef shark is trying to corner them against the coral. Tropical fish win their race of life against the sharks by using colors and erratic movements to confuse them. But the shark is also a supreme athlete. He can twist and turn at speed to catch his slippery prey. Beneath the coral surface, a colony of crustaceans has attracted the sharks. It's also attracted other fish. This is a wonderful smorgasbord for the reef sharks. Some are so excited, they're using their snouts to dig deeper into the coral. One lucky winner has found the remains of somebody else's catch. Reef fish are used to living with sharks. It's hard not to imagine this is just a playful game. This lone shark is waiting for the best time of day for hunting. Sunset, when the shadows are long and the shark disappears against the black rocks. He dives straight in, a catch in seconds. The taste of meat drives the sharks into even more of a frenzy. Now there are hundreds of black tips, all attracted from miles around by the excitement. The holes and crevices provide a refuge for the prey. 
shrimps, snakes and fish are all pushing themselves deep into the rocks. This big eye has arrived at the wrong place at the wrong time. He's racing for his life against the odds, but he's fast and nimble. But so is the reef shark. The big eye's race is over. Feeding frenzies like this are not just a race of life. For the reef sharks, this is a giant team sport. And on nights like tonight, the reef shark is the winner. Underwater predators have adopted extreme measures to hunt and to survive. The fish of the reef need to be fast to escape the barracuda and wary to survive swimming near the lairs of the moray eel. They may be ambushed by the deadly beauty of the reef, the lionfish, or sucked into the huge mouth of the stonefish. At every moment, they need to be running their race of life against an army of attackers. Thank <laughs> you.